blueprints for transparent trading in cutting the red tape. Europe needs reform. Hello everybody and welcome to my Dece December blog. Merry Christmas! Um, we're preparing for Christmas here in Strasbourg, which they like to call the capital of Christmas here in France, and it, indeed it's very pretty. Unseasonably warm, which is interesting comment, considering uh, the climate change conference that's just closed. And we've been talking about that a little bit uh, this week, but not a, not a great deal because obviously the data needs to be analysed and we need to think about where we're going. But all in all, uh, I would say it, not much changed really with the climate change uh, conference except for one thing which I think will be really significant and that is the obvious ability, the obvious a propensity to engage from the Chinese. They, they really have taken on board the idea that they need to do something and although we don't have binding targets on what they need to do, I think the, the fact that they've acknowledged it now and it's become mainstream for them is a good thing and, and uh, will help uh, certainly countries like the UK with our Climate Change Act which frankly was groundbreaking and we've been leading the pack for a long time. Uh, it's good to know that others will be catching up. So apart from climate change, what are we doing here in Strasbourg? We've got quite a lot of interesting things going on. A uh, lot of small things, but important. Uh, one of those, and a lot of you have written to me about it, is uh, a piece of legislation called Invasive Alien Species. And the ones you're most likely to be familiar with are things like grey squirrels, which are technically an invasive species and have driven out our native red squirrel, largely, from most of England. Uh, this new regulation is much tougher and requires member states to take action in their member state, even if a species is not seen as particularly invasive there, uh, because other member states are suffering problems. And we have a particular problem with a Spanish duck, which some of you may be uh, familiar with, which whilst we ruthlessly um, get rid of it in the UK, because they don't in Spain, it just flies back every spring, this legislation is there to sort that sort of thing out. So if that particular duck is on the list, it means that Spanish authorities also have to deal with it. And that will be good for us and for our wildfowl. But there are difficulties. Uh, the list of the first list has just been produced, and I know a lot of you have some difficulties with it because it includes some aquatic plants, which many people think, uh, because they can't survive the British winter, should not be banned in Britain. Perhaps we could talk about climate change there again. I think they're going to survive this winter if it doesn't get much colder. But the point, the principle is this list has come out and it's not adequate. It's been produced by the Commission and we in Parliament are voting today, in fact, um, and I'm supporting it, to reject the list. They need to think again about what's on the list and make sure they get, target the most important species first. That's the principle. We've also got a vote today on genetic modification. Uh, again, we we're constantly having these. If you're interested in that, I refer you to my website where you'll see a couple of speeches that I've made on that subject over the last few weeks. Uh, I get increasingly frustrated by the use of this parliament here as um, a sort of pet place for people who hold opinions they're perfectly entitled to, but want to make them law based on their opinion, not on scientific fact bothers me and uh, I hope today that in our vote we will overturn uh, that uh, tendency. So we're also of talking a lot about Brexit. Uh, we've got European Council tomorrow, Thursday and Friday and David Cameron will be talking about his proposals. There's so much speculation in the British press. You, you know as much about that as I do so I won't go on about it but it really is a crunch time now here in, in Brussels, but please don't expect any answers before Christmas. There will be a lot of talking, there will be a lot of shuffling papers around tables, there's a lot of uh, back-channel diplomacy going on on it. If there are headlines uh, this weekend suggesting that Mr Cameron has failed, I would simply say, hold your horses. Uh, nothing will be decided, nothing will have been decided. People are putting their opening positions on the table. We need to wait until after Christmas into the early spring till we get a final answer. 
So on that subject, one which is uh, being talked about all over here in Strasbourg, I'd like to say yet again, have a very Merry Christmas and a very Happy New Year and I look forward to speaking to you again in January.